So in this video, we've got a magician claims they can influence dice with the power of their mind. The magician rolls a die 150 times and the results are as follows. Test at the 1% level to determine whether there is evidence to suggest the magician's claim is true. Okay, so what you're seeing here are the observed frequencies. So if you think back to chi-squared contingency table test, here's the table of observed frequencies. So let's build up a new table up here. So score, and we can have the observed frequency. So I'm just going to change frequency to FO. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we've got 32... 27, 14, 26, 16, and 35. Okay. Right, so now we want the expected frequency. Now, our expectation here is that the die is fair. And um, so if there were 150 rolls, OK, uh, divide that by six and we get 25. Now, granted, if you got 25 of each, you would probably think that's a bit odd. OK, that's a bit weird. Um, but that would be the expected frequency if um, this was completely independent and uh, there was no such thing as this... Um, uh, power of their mind influencing the scores, the results. Right, so then what we need to do is we need to calculate the contributions. Now the contributions use the same formula that you used in chi-squared contingency table test. So that would be FO take away FE squared divided by FE. Okay, so we've got, uh, so the first one, we've got 32, take away 25 squared, divided by 25, so 1.96. Right, then we've got uh, 27, take away 25 squared, divided by 25, 0.16. All right, let's change it to 14. 4.84, right, then to 26, um, 0.04, then to 16, so 3.24, and then uh, to 35, which is 4. OK, right, just double checking, everything's all right, yeah, OK, right, so these are our contributions then. So what we want is the chi-squared statistic, uh, so that'd be the sum of all of these, so we'd have 1.96 plus 0.16 plus 4.84 plus 0.04 plus 3.24 plus 4, and that gets us 14.24. OK, so we've got the statistic we need. Right, so how does the hypothesis test go? Well, um, when we were doing the chi-squared contingen contingency table test, uh, we would do this as there is no association between, there is some association between. Um, here, the null hypothesis would say that the probability of each outcome is the same. Okay, so the probability is one sixth uh, for each outcome. H1 would be that P is not equal to one sixth for each outcome. OK, so what is the uh, number of degrees of freedom? Now, in the previous video, in the introductory video, I explained that we've got to be a little bit careful with the um, 
number of degrees of freedom because in some cases you're going to find as we work through these tests um, that it's not exactly the same as what we had done previously in the chi-squared contingency table test and that's really down to whether there is any estimates that we've made for any of the parameters that must be taken into account here we haven't needed to do that so um, we haven't had to estimate any of the parameters so we've got six altogether so we've got to take one away for the number of degrees of freedom so there are five degrees of freedom so using nu equals five at the one percent significance level the critical value is right so for this we need to go to our statistical tables okay so chi-squared Distribution, this is on page 13 of the OCR MEI formula booklet. Um, so we're looking at a 1% significance level, and nu is 5, and we get 15.09. Oh, 09. So our chi squared statistic, 14.24, is less than 15.09. So the result is not significant. So fail to reject H0. So there is insufficient evidence To suggest the magician um, can influence dice with the power of their mind, can influence the dice with the power of their mind. Okay, so the setup for this hypothesis test, very similar to what you've done previously with the chi-squared. Um, so yeah, uh, it's relatively straightforward to do. It's just like knowing what you're doing with the expected values here, um, how to actually get those values out um, as we work through. So we're going to go through another example in the next video.